yes, it does feel like ADHD is a superpower sometimes, but there are also a lot of days when you can't sleep the night before because you can't make yourself stop thinking about something, um, and then your uh, symptoms are cascadingly bad the next day so that you forget to eat until your hands start shaking, and you're buying like a hot dog and a slice of pizza desperately at a Costco um, because you don't have food in your fridge because you haven't planned that far ahead. I'm not gonna point a camera at dirty dishes or literal dirty laundry and put that on the internet. It isn't done um, except in performative ways or ways that are selectively vulnerable like this where I'm not even really sharing like the difficulty that led up to this. Maybe you've heard about the file drawer problem in academic studies. It refers to we only publish stuff that makes us look good. And if we spend six months or a year doing a study and we end up finding nothing particularly interesting or nothing that makes us look good, we're not, people don't, people, people don't publish it. So there's a publication bias. What this means in practice is if you have a study that just points to an ambiguity that is important as there are some nuances in the world and everything is not clear cut, that nuanced study is less likely to be published. There is a similar version of this going on on social media, but I think it's actually worse. Because it's not just that people don't want to publish a video of their house looking like garbage or their headspace looking like garbage. The algorithms additionally won't pump stuff like that out. I'm a content creator. I, I'm not going to make money posting a video of my dirty dishes. Incentive structure and the social pressure are all aligned to not share the real difficulty associated with mental health issues like depression, like ADHD, like many of the things that you hear about. But at the risk of sounding like I know what I'm talking about, there's actually a third and more pernicious mechanism for how social media bubbles don't show us the true reality of how people with mental illness struggle. I know I'm lumping ADHD in with depression as a mental illness. It's because I have both of them. I know they're not, I know it's not semantics. But one of the things that happens when you have a dysfunction in your impulse control is that you are more likely to do things that land you in prison. This is one of the things that I don't hear discussed on the ADHD online discourse. James Hallowell, or Ned Hallowell, talks about it in his ADHD book in like the first 20 pages. There's an overrepresentation of people with ADHD in the prison population. You know who isn't posting videos about ADHD online? People who are in prisons. And it is in fact even worse than that because people with significant mental health issues often end up not surviving for one reason or another. So, um, if you find yourself out on the internet streets and you're seeing information about mental health or you're finding yourself worried like, oh man, it's over this ADHD stuff seems kind of seems kind of popular right now or everybody's this and everybody's that, like take a step back and recognize that you are seeing a very selective slice of what that struggle really looks like for a lot of people. And sorry to be on a high horse. I'm just assuming that if I, as a person who has spent actively years of his life trying to undo stigma associated with mental illness, if I, having do, constantly doing that work, feel a stigma about how much this certain topics are being discussed in the public discourse, if I'm feeling that, I'm assuming that a lot of other people are feeling that. And I do, in fact, know people that haven't made it. Um, so I just feel strongly that uh, we, we need to recognize that there is there is an epistemic blind spot in the way that we are discussing these things on social media, both because the people can't give testimony if they're no longer here and because algorithms are more likely to serve us things that we find entertaining. And the reality of mental illness is that it is often very much not entertaining. Okay, the lighting has changed. I've already shot a whole bunch of different versions of this ending, all of them varying degrees of hopeful. Um, join my Patreon if you want me to be able to afford more Costco pizza and other things you have to pay with the ADHD tax. But um, to not undermine what I said uh, before for the sake of making my expression of pain into a product that is commodifiable enough to be uh, entertaining, um, something Bo Burnham does really well when he discusses um, his anxiety. Uh, <laughs> Perhaps I'm saying this to you, or perhaps I'm just saying it to me. If all you did today is eat or feed yourself, that might be okay some days. Um, and if it is a little bit dissonant to you that you see the world becoming aware of the struggles that you go through in the language that it uses, but you don't see yourself, you don't see your own experience in represented in that struggle, you're not alone. That's all.